welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we had discussed uh, some of the essential concepts of uh, use case modeling and uh, we had looked at the basic diagrams, how to factor a use case and so on. And at the end of the lecture, we were discussing about an example problem. The problem was about a video store information system. In the video store information system, we had a text description about the store operations and we are required to find out, we must find out from the text description about uh, what are the use cases and the actors and then represent them in the form of a use case. The first functionality, here of course, in this text description, we have uh, almost clearly identified the different functionalities in the form of bullet points, but then in practice, you may get a text description in the form of a paragraph or page and then have to read it thoroughly and identify the use cases and remember that each use case is a functionality of the system that can be invoked by a user. So, let us uh, read this. The first functionality is about entering information about all the video that the store owns and once the video information is stored, the database can be searched by staff and customer. So, that means, if a customer or staff wants to find out if a video exists in the score, store, he can search the database. The second is store information about the borrowed videos. So, this is uh, what are the videos borrowed by a specific customer. This is accessed by staff and customer involves video database searching. The staff can record video rentals and returns by customers. So, each time a customer borrows a video, this is entered by the staff and also when it is returned by the customer, this information is entered by the staff. So, we have both the actor that is staff and the use case that is record video borrowing or video rental. The staff can maintain customer and video information that is it can add new customers, delete customers, similarly can add new videos, delete some of the videos that is the maintenance activity and the store manager can generate various reports. If we identify these uh, use cases and the actors, we should be able to represent in the form of a use case diagram. And of course, we need to identify any factoring of the use case. Let us represent this in the form of a use case diagram for this example. We have the rent and return videos is by the staff as mentioned and the rent and return use case includes the search for videos. The search for videos is also can be invoked by the customer and the staff. The staff can maintain the customers that is add customer, delete customer and the staff can maintain the videos that is add videos, delete videos and this involves searching the video database. And 
the manager can generate reports. So, this uh, captures all the functionality has been defined in the text description. But the text, but the huge case model, the huge case diagram gives only limited amount of information. More specific information needs to be accompanied in the form of a text description. The UML standard by itself does not recommend any specific style for recording the information to accompany the use case diagram, but there are some standard ways have emerged based on work of some authors and companies. One is about Alistair Cockburn writing effective use cases book. So, in this book Alistair Cockburn recommends that the description accompanying a use case diagram should have name of the use case, the actors who would be participating in the use case execution, the triggers that is under what instances events the use case will start, the precondition for the use case to start what condition should have been satisfied, the post condition after the use case completes what are some of the conditions that uh, should be satisfied and the different scenarios of the use case. The main line scenario is the typical scenario, but then the exceptional scenarios are called as the alternative flows and this also should be identified for each use case. We will just take couple of examples and see how we can document uh, use case. But before we discuss how to document, we need to discuss about the use case scenarios. Almost every use case has a number of scenarios, one is called the main line scenario that we have shown in the form of a straight arrow. Typically this is what happens, you want to withdraw cash from the ATM, bank ATM just went there and then inserted the card and uh, it asked for pin, entered the pin, entered the amount and then you confirmed and it dispensed the cash. Typically that is what happens, but sometimes you entered the ATM card, entered password, it asked for the amount, you entered 550 rupees, it said please enter amount in multiple of 500. So, you have to re enter that is one scenario and then you entered correctly and it dispenses the cash. In another scenario it may so happen that uh, after you entered the amount it says insufficient balance and it ends the use case it just ejected the card and so on. So, for every use case we need to identify the main line scenario that typically occurs and the alternate scenarios. This is a example documentation text document to accompany the use case diagram for the ATM bank ATM and here the use case that we are documenting is money withdrawal the actor is the customer, the precondition is the condition that must be satisfied for the use case to operate. Here the ATM must be in a state ready to accept transaction, ATM must have some cash, ATM must have enough paper to print. 
otherwise the money withdraw use case cannot be started. The post condition is the conditions that uh, holds after the use case completes. Here the post condition can be the current amount of the cash in the user account and the amount before withdraw cash minus the withdraw amount. So, that is after the cash has been withdrawn then that must reflect on the user account. A receipt was printed on the withdraw amount, but this appears bit artificial both precondition and post condition. This is just an example and we need to write the precondition and post condition when it adds value to the text description. It is not necessary that we just uh, keep on writing something which uh, does not help in the documentation. Somebody reading the precondition and post condition should be able to get some value regarding the understanding of the use case. Just filling precondition and post condition does not help. Here we have just written this to explain what needs to be written, but then unless it adds value we need not have the precondition and post condition. And then we need to identify the mainline scenario and the alternate scenarios. Here each scenario is in the form of a actor action that is the user comes and inputs certain thing to the system and the system responds. So, this is a actor or the user action in response to which the system produces some action. Begins when a customer arrives at ATM, inserts card into the ATM, system verifies the customer ID and status, customer chooses the withdraw operation. the system asks uh, for operation type, the customer enters cash amount, okay, the system asks for the cash amount that in response to that the customer enters the cash, the system checks if the amount is legal that is a valid amount, system dispenses the cash, system deducts the am withdraw amount from the account and the system prints a receipt. The system ejects the cash card and the customer takes the cash card and the receipt. This is a typical scenario and uh, this is what normally happens in the cash withdraw use case, but uh, there can be alternate scenarios. One alternate event is that at step 3 the customer authorization fails and the, the pin does not match and displays an error message and cancels the transaction and ejects the card. Another alternate flow is that step 8, the customer has insufficient fund in the account, it displays an error message and it starts from step 6. In step 8, the customer exceeds the legal amount, it displays an error message and goes to step 6. So, the customer enters more than 20,000 or something. There can be some exceptional flows of event, for example, power failure in the process of transaction, then cancel the transaction and eject the card. This is another example of the description of the change flight in a travel portal. The actor is the traveler, the precondition is that the traveler has logged on to the system and selected flight change, change flight itinerary. The main line course or the basic course here is that the system retrieves the account 
traveler's account, the flight itinerary, and then it asks the traveler to select the segment wants to change. The system asks the traveler new departure and destination information, and if flight is available, then it makes the necessary changes. If additional cost to be incurred, asks for the cost. Otherwise, if there is no alternate flight available, it just stops and displays the transactions summary. Okay. So, if the no alter if no flight is available, then it is an alternate course. If the flights are available, then it proceeds for booking with uh, the amount payable and so on and displays the transaction summary. But it may so happen that there are no flight available and then that is the alternate course and it just displays that no flight available and it stops. In writing the text description, there are some guidelines for effective use case writing which have emerged. Most of the authors, they agree on this that uh, the documentation should use simple sentences. One sentence should not have both the system doing something and the actor responding or the actor and the system responses are not written on a single sentence. For example, get the amount from the user and give him the receipt is not a very good way of uh, documenting. We should write one step is that the system prompts about the amount. The user inputs the amount and the system gives him a receipt or some such thing. So, it has to be split between the user action and the system response. Just like here, this is actually the system responds to the actor actions. The actor acts and based on that the system produces some response and so on and the description should also be like that. And also we should be careful that should not document uh, trivial events. For example, let us uh, say that uh, the user clicks the mouse key to select a option, selects one of the check boxes and then clicks another mouse key for selecting another check box and so on. Uh, that only becomes adds to the length of the document without adding value. We have to write a crisp document where each step of the user and the system leads to some progress towards the use case execution, some tangible prog progress. It should not be trivial. Now, the question comes is that given a text description, how do we identify the use cases? One is that we have to read it thoroughly and identify what are the functionality to be supported by the system, but then it helps if we can examine the documentation again on actor based way. In the actor based way, we first identify who are the users of the system or the actors. And then for each actor or user, we identify which use cases they are uh, initiating and then we document those use cases in the diagram and also we connect the actor to that use case. We can also have a event based identification, where we identify all the events to which the system responds. that is for each use case what can be the input and then based on that we identify the use cases and then 
we identify the events to the actors that who, which actor generates this event and we connect the actor to the use case. There is no straightforward solution to how to identify the use cases, but then the first thing is we have to read the text document thoroughly, try to find out the high level functionalities that the system must support from this reading and also then try out the actor based identification of the use cases and see if we have missed any use case which we previously identified and also try the event based identification and hopefully you would have got all the actors and use cases in the diagram. Now, let us try to have another example worked out. This is a course management software. In the course management software at the beginning of each semester of an academic institute, the professors they register for the courses in the software which they are going to teach. So, they sign up for the courses and once the professor sign up for a course, the students can register for that course. The student can register up to four courses and uh, during their registration they can request for a course catalog that is the syllabus which they have to complete and see what are the courses remaining for them. The information about each course such as which professor will offer it, the department, the prerequisites etcetera are displayed. The registration system sends information once the registration by the student is complete, the software sends information to the billing system which is an external system that is another software which is running so that the student can be billed for the semester. And for each semester, there is certain time period during which a student can drop a course he has registered. The professors should be able to find out which students have signed up for their courses. So, this is the rough description of the system, of course, can have additional description like uh, the students should be able, uh, the professors should be able to post the grades, the students should be able to see the grades and so on. So, you can document this in this uh, diagram and identify any factoring of the use cases, we will just show it slightly larger in the next slide so that it is readable. So, this is the course management software. The professor registers for the course which is going to offer and the professor can see the courses uh, for which the students have registered, can see the students who have registered for the courses that we have written a so registration or we could have given a name so registered students, maybe that would have been a more appropriate name. So, registered students. Just observe that all the use cases that we are naming are in the verb form register, so, see, drop, etcetera, these are all verbs. The use cases are named in verb form because these are action items, these are the functionality supported by the system. The two use cases to which the professor can invoke are the register course to be offered and so student registration who have registered for the courses. And the student can register for course and as the description says while registering for the course can see the course list. So, write the extend 
this use case C course list regist, uh, ca can be optionally invoked during register course. And after course registration, the information is sent to an external billing software. So, this is the external billing software to which the information is sent and to document that the student can register up to 4 courses, we just write the same thing here. And the student can drop a course till certain time and that we document here in the form of a calendar. The time even though it appears like uh, the clock is internal to the system, but it is a good practice to have a calendar or clock as one of the actors and after some time it is not possible to drop the course. So, whenever there is a time element by certain date or after certain date at certain time and so on, it is a good idea to have one of the actor as the calendar or the clock. We will see later that this helps in the design process, the subsequent diagrams we do would be simplified if we have this uh, calendar or clock included here. And then after doing this, this is the use case diagram which you have developed based on the text description. And at this point, we need to start writing the text description. The text description should accompany this diagram and there we need to use the template that we discussed that for each use case, we write the name of the use case, the actor and if necessary the pre and post conditions and also the main line scenario and all the alternate scenarios must be documented. Till now, we have seen some basic elements of the use case modeling. What are the different symbols in the use case diagram, factoring of the use case and how to identify the use case? We have discussed it with a couple of examples, we will just discuss few more examples in the next lecture and identify some of the good principles in the development of use case model and then we will move on to the class diagram. Thank you.